Hi, I'm Carrie Blackburn. I am a professional performer, a health insurance agent, and an Affordable Care Act navigator. And we're going to talk a little bit about how to find affordable health insurance as an artist today. So let's start with some basic terms. A copay is transactional. That's going to be when you go to the doctor, that's what you pay at the end of the visit. This is separate from what goes into your deductible. This is just a flat fee that you pay for services. Your deductible is how much you can pay for covered services before that button is pushed and the coinsurance amount goes into effect. And then your coinsurance amount is the amount, the percentage that your plan pays of any kind of covered care after the deductible. That could be 70, 30, 80, 20, 85, 15, what have you. It depends on the plan. And then your maximum out of pocket is with that coinsurance amount in place, how much could you possibly have to pay worst case scenario? So let's talk about some different types of plans. An HMO is probably the most restrictive type of plan you can have. You'll be asked to choose a primary care physician that is in network and then you'll have to go to them first before you go to anyone else to see a specialist or anything like that. Now these plans are also going to be the least expensive but there is absolutely no out-of-network coverage. Then on the other side, PPOs are the least restrictive type of plan. So with PPOs, you'll have the option between seeing an in-network physician for a lower cost or an out-of-network physician at a higher cost. However, you need no referral to see a specialist. But these plans are usually a good bit more expensive. Then there's point of service plans, which is kind of a combination of an HMO and a PPO. So you'll have one primary care physician that you usually go to, but then you also have the option to pay for out of network physicians, a la PPO, for a higher cost. And the price will also be just about in the middle. Okay, now that we've covered that, let's talk about the Affordable Care Act. So the subsidies are the most important part of this process. And the subsidy is actually an advance on a tax credit that you could get in the future. So you have a few options. On the healthcare.gov website, it will have you enter your projected income for the next year. So this works different than other government aid sites in that it doesn't work from your previous year's tax returns. It works from your projected income for the next year. So the easiest thing to do with that is do the math of what you've made in the past year and average it. Or if you want, you can go by your highest month times 12 because then you'll probably get that extra back at the end of the year. Also, if you have no idea how much you're going to make but you do think you're going to make a subsidy, then you don't have to use the subsidy at all on your individual monthly payments. You can pay the face value of the plan and then get whatever subsidy you end up being eligible for as a tax credit the next tax year. So even if you do get health insurance from another job, it's worth it to check and see if that job-based insurance is considered affordable. So in this case, affordability is determined by at least 60% of the covered benefits or premiums would cost you no more than 9.5% of your annual income after tax credits are applied. So who applies for the government subsidies? So you are eligible for government subsidy help through the Affordable Care Act if you make between 100% and 400% of the federal poverty level, which for this year is 12,760. So if you make between 12,760 and 31,900, you'll also qualify for cost sharing reductions, even though those have to be applied to a silver plan. And and then if you make between 31900 and 51040 you will get a subsidy but no cost sharing reductions. So what do you do if you don't qualify for a government subsidy? So it gets a little bit trickier because everything isn't laid out so right in front of you, but you have a lot of different options and the key is to be creative, which artists are fantastic at. So you can go a few different routes. There are different uh, websites that let you compare private plans side by side, sites like policygenius.com. You also can go through different unions. There's the freelancers union, the National Association for the Self-Employed, 
Also, self-employed individuals can get group insurance, which will usually be more for your money. You can get that if you have one other employee that's not a spouse. So you can also go through the Chamber of Commerce in your city. There are different things like that. There's also the Professional Photographers of America if you're a photographer. Just look at what you're interested in and what industry you're in. See if there are different groups of unions or different kinds of groups that reap benefits together. Next, I'm going to talk about a couple of special enrollment periods, which is what allows you to get on a marketplace plan outside of the open enrollment period, which for this year is November 1st through December 15th. So the first one is if you turn 26 and you are losing your parents' coverage. So that can mean a lot of different things. Is it the next day? Is it that month? Is it the end of that calendar year? And the answer is it completely depends on the plan. Some job-based insurances kick you off the next day after your birthday. A lot of plans will give you 30 days of wiggle room before and after your birthday, but then if your parents are on a marketplace plan, you have until December 31st of that year. And a good rule of thumb is if you want a plan to be effective by, say, February 1st, you need to have your plan signed up and ready to go by January 15th, so the 15th of the month prior. So another special enrollment period that we're seeing a lot of, especially due to COVID-19, is people losing employer-based coverage. So with that, you have a few options. It will definitely apply you for a special enrollment period under the Affordable Care Act, so you can log on and enter your new projected income for that year and see what you're eligible for subsidy-wise. You also can enact COBRA, which you have 60 days to decide if you want to do. Now, the only thing about COBRA is it's going to be the exact same coverage that you had before starting the day after your employer coverage ends. However, it's going to be the cost of that employer-based coverage, but you pay the part that you were paying before in addition to the part that your employer was paying. So it's going to be a big financial burden and it can get tricky. Oftentimes as an artist, the health of your body is absolutely imperative to making the best kind of art possible. And a lot of that goes along with having access to specialists who understand your field and what you need. So a really key thing about specialists is to, even if you have not had to go to someone like a physical therapist yet, do some research and see which physical therapists are a great fit for your field. This also applies to doctors like ENTs. Go ahead and find out who, if you were in trouble, you would love to be able to see, and then under the healthcare.gov website, enter it in under find your provider when you are searching for a plan so that then later you're not caught wishing that you could have gone to this doctor that had something really great for your field but you just didn't know that you needed it yet also you don't have to understand all of the little nuances because that's what agents are there for so they are not paid from you it's commission built into the cost of the plan which i had no idea when i was an uninsured artist so getting help from them is free and then you have someone on call if you have to file a claim if you have a question about changing plans if you have something happen to you unexpectedly in the middle of the year you have someone whose job it is to help so especially with affordable care act plans you can go on healthcare.com gov's website and type in find a local agent or find local help and it'll connect with someone in your area in your zip code that you can call or meet with in person again maybe and help you out thank you so much for watching this video and if you have questions or want to dive a little bit more in depth with me i'm going to be teaching a free class on october 27th from 6 to 8 p.m on the artswell website thanks so much